You've clicked on this video because you want a mechanical trading course. You want to know exactly how to build a mechanical trading strategy. And that is what you're going to learn today. So if you've been struggling with your trading, if you haven't been able to find your edge or build your own strategy, this video will definitely help you out there. So it's going to be a bit of a longer video. So I do recommend taking notes and watching till the end because at the end, I will be sharing some crucial tips that if you don't use those, your backtesting might go wrong. So let's dive into today's video. Now, before I'm going to dive into all the topics quickly about me, I've been trading for almost seven years. I've got multiple funded accounts. I'm a full-time trader and I'm a verified trading mentor, meaning that a third party company has checked my results and they gave me a certificate because I'm actually a profitable trader and these people uh, checked everything basically. So just quickly, so you know, I'm not just some guy on the internet been trading for three months from my mom's basement and then teaching you all these things. That's ridiculous. I actually do have a lot of experience. Without further ado, let's dive into the topics of today. So what will you learn? First of all, what exactly is mechanical trading and its benefits really important? Then the right step of edge development so the right process of edge development because most people do this the wrong way and therefore get wrong results then the steps and then some important things to consider so that's why i told you guys watch till the end because at the end i will share you some important things and like i said if you don't use these things you will make mistakes in your testing and your development and then obviously there is room for questions so let's get started what is mechanical trading what are the benefits? Mechanical trading basically consists of these three things. It's completely black and white. It's a programmable strategy. It's rule-based. So it's a set of parameters that you follow over and over and over again. And that gives you consistency. So if you say you're trading, I don't know, when someone tells me I'm trading breakouts, that's not mechanical. That's just a vague concept. If you're trading an opening range breakout the first hour after the open and you trade a 50 minute close through and a stop on the other side of the range, that becomes more mechanical. It becomes programmable, rule-based, black and white. And that really is mechanical trading. And most people think they are using mechanical trading when they're really not. So that's really important to realize. Now, what are the benefits? It's easy to backtest because you just have a set of parameters and you look for it. And if the chart meets all the parameters, or if you do it automatically, it's also possible. You can then log all the results very quickly and have your backtest and find out if the strategy has any edge or at least had any edge in the past. Next to that, it's easier to trade. And especially for you beginners out there or people that have been struggling, you will find that if you have something that not completely mechanical, you will have doubts. Because there's this gray area. You're looking at the chart and you're like, is this a setup I should take or should I not take it? And those tend to be the winning trades. If you skip them and if you take them, it's a losing trade. And you're like, ah, oh, shit, I shouldn't have taken it. And it goes on and on and on. And so many people have this issue. But if you have, you know, been struggling and you have this mechanical trading strategy, you can easily or at least more easy find your edge because you have such rules that you just need to follow you get experience under your belt and then later on when you have experience you have one mechanical strategy you can trade it without mistakes then you can look into other things maybe systematic discretion those type of things but i do believe starting with mechanical trading is going to be the best thing purely to get experience under your belt right so let's take a look at the edge development process how does it actually look what do you need to do it begins with observing, and that's really basic. For example, you observe that something happens quite often, and then you take a note of that. I have a notebook next to my computer, and if I notice something or if I hear someone saying, oh, I notice this very often in this market, write it down, that's observing. Then you go to step two, defining. So you define what you've observed, and you make basically more clear rules. Then step three is really asking, what if? What if I buy the 15 minute breakout of the Asian range? What if I buy the opening range? What if I, um, I don't know, fade the gap that happens at the open? What if questions? And that really gives you a premise of what you wanna be testing. Then when you got defined rules and you got your what if questions, so what you wanna test, it's time to gather data. Once you found a confirmed edge there, you can look into optimization, but it's not necessarily needed. 
then you demo trade, then you live trade, and then you scale up. And that's really when profitable trading comes around. So that's in short how the process looks. It goes way more into it, but I want to take you to all these steps uh, to give you all the details. So let's go to step number one, observing and defining. So observing. I noticed that often the Sunday night gaps in EURUSD get filled. That's just an observation. Maybe you read it somewhere. Maybe you hear it from someone. Whatever it is, it's just a basic example of an observation. Then you want to define it. What are the odds of the gap filling within the first day? And that's taking your observation and making it a bit more clear. So that's what you need to do. And it's really important to do this because most people are stuck with a concept or an observation. And that's really hard to test. And then they go back on a chart and they're like, oh, this one and this one and this one. And they're basically cherry picking. And that's what you want to prevent. So it's really important to clearly define what you have been observing and also to put in those what if questions. What if I enter a trade in the direction of the gap fill with a stop one, si one times the size of the gap? Do you see how clear that is? Like there is no guesswork there. It's really clear. As soon as the gap happens, you open a trade to play for the gap fill and your stop is one times the size of the gap. Really clear. Your target is going to be the gap fill. That's very, very clear. What if I enter a trade in the direction of the gap fill with one times a 24 period ATR stop? Those types of what if questions. And as you can see, it's clear. It's rule based. It's simple. And that's really important, especially when you're going from your observation to then something rule based. It should be clear. It should be simple. I do believe, and that's what I know from seven years of experience, that most people overcomplicate things and that if you are going to develop your mechanical trading strategy, if it needs five, ten filters for it to work, five or ten rules, I need to see this, I need to see that, I need to see that, then often it's not really good. You really want the simple basic idea to already be easy to test, but also give you some kind of results. And I will dive into that a bit deeper but be clear be rule-based and simple then the next step so we've now defined exactly what we want to be testing the next step is going to be gathering data you want to build a plan on how you're going to back test this and most people just do this wrong again they just go to the chart oh this is an example 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 no what method of testing are you going to use are you going to use an automation so are you going to build an ea are you going to do it manually? I do recommend doing it manually, especially when you're not profitable yet. Reason being is that if you program the strategy and you just put it in a strategy tester and it gives you the results, you never experience the strategy. It's just push button results. If you test it manually, you go to the good periods, the bad periods, and you already build some kind of skin in the game, as you will, in the strategy during drawdowns and that's really important so i do recommend doing that maybe in just one market or two marks to get a hang of it then you can automate things but that's crucial to think about then you want to build an excel sheet to keep track of all the data and also filter the data that you need you want to write down all the rules that you're going to test and you want to obviously test multiple years. So this strategy is specifically designed for the euro dollar, but you also want to test other markets as well to see if similar behavior happens. And I will dive later into that as well. But if you're going to develop an edge, test for around 10 years. So you have different market environments, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trades because just 50 trades isn't going to cut it. You know, my strategy has a few thousand trades, sample size, 10 years, multiple multiple marks more than 20 markets and that's really what you want rather be a bit too much than too little and most people just do too little back testing yeah just have two years three years one market oh it looks good yeah on those on that sample if you take a look at a bigger sample most things just don't work so that's really important now when you found something and you are happy with the basic results of your basic idea. And again, the simple idea should provide some form of edge. So it doesn't have to be perfect. The drawdowns doesn't have to be that slim, but you really want to see that the idea that you tested over this 10 year period does provide some form of results. If that's not the case, if it's highly negative, 
you can optimize, but then the edge comes from optimization using information that you already knew. And in my opinion, that's not the best way to do it. If you're going to optimize, there are a few things that you want to think about. And that's these three things. Prevent curve fitting. What is curve fitting? Curve fitting basically means that, okay, you got all the information and now you're going to make sure that the curve fits your expectations. So you got, for example, let me draw a line. You got an equity curve that maybe looks like this. Now you're going to look back at this sample size, find the best setting for your indicators or whatever it is to make the curve look better during that 10 year period. And if you do it like this, you're building a better backtest. You're not building a better strategy for the future. So be very careful of this. And I do have a few tips I'm going to share later to prevent this. But for now, add a filter that makes sense. A lot of people will be like, I tested this strategy over 10 years and it forms decently. But hey, if I didn't trade it on a Friday or on a Tuesday, then the results were way better. So I'm going to take out this Tuesday of the backtesting and look at that. It looks amazing. But if you think about it, why on earth would Tuesday just be a bad performer? If it doesn't make sense for your strategy, you shouldn't use that filter because it's just optimizing based on data, random data um, that gives you a better backtest. And that's just an example. So add filters that make sense. And there are certain filters. So if you're going to use indicators and you can change the parameters, you want to use out of sample data for this. And that's quite a complex topic, out of sample data. I'm not going to dive into that today, but just be really realistic, guys. Like if you want to build, you know, if you got an equity curve that looks like this, probably not sustainable. If you got five filters, and it's, a, it, I'm not going to trade on Tuesday. Okay, I'm not going to trade this, that. And you're cutting out half of the sample um, based on fields that don't make sense. Don't do it, you know, because you're going to lose money if you do that. Then the next step is going to be demo trading. And this is going to sound boring. But again, are you happy with the results? So you did your initial backtesting. Maybe that you, you did some optimization. Are you happy with the results? Can, can you see yourself trading the strategy with the performance that it has or at least had in the backtest and expect worse in the future. You did a backtest. The The past is not similar. Like, yeah, it is similar to the future, but it's not exactly the same. So if I get a maximum drawdown of 30R in the backtest, I can expect the 40R maximum drawdown in the future, maybe a bit more. And you've got to take it into consideration as well. But if you're happy with the results, with the strategy, everything around it, the question then becomes, can you trade this strategy on demo in live market environments without making mistakes? And you want to journal everything and you want to keep track of all the mistakes that you make. And again, this might seem quite boring. And the reason I always tell people to demo trade first is because Trading the live markets versus backtesting is completely different. And when you're going to the demo trading stage, you might find that certain things that you've tested aren't really useful when you're trading it live. And in my opinion, it doesn't really make sense to then throw a lot of money in a live account, figure out that there are mistakes that you are making with the strategy with live money while you can do that on demo trading. So I would say trade the strategy for at least a month on a demo account Keep track of all the mistakes, fix all those mistakes before you go to live trading because this way you can save yourself some money. Now, when you're live trading, so you only go live trading if you've been able to trade that strategy on demo for, I would say, at least a month. That means you fixed all the mistakes and you're now ready to go live. Risk your own money and see how that feels because some people do struggle with trading live capital. You want to start with a small live account. And then the question becomes again, can you trade the strategy with real money without mistakes? Journal everything, make sure you keep track of all your mistakes, fix those mistakes, and then scale up. Step seven, scale up. So not backtesting a little bit. Oh, I'm going to sign up for a prop account. No, follow all the steps. And it sounds boring, but you need it. Because now you have an edge. 
and you can trade it in the live markets with real money without making mistakes. And it's a strategy you developed and that fits with you. And that's really important. So you basically have everything you need. And then it's time to scale up. And that can be done via prop firms, building your own account, whatever it is. But this is the process, guys. This is the process to follow to build your edge. And there goes more into this. I know that because it's a very big process. It's a very big project on going from just an idea to an actual trading edge. Um, but on YouTube, you know, this video would be hours and hours long because you need to take in so much into consideration. But I think using all those steps is already going to help you a lot. Now, before I leave, important things to consider. And this is really crucial. When you develop mechanical trading strategies, always consider trading calls. And so many people don't do this, especially if you're developing day trading strategies, the impact of costs is going to be high and higher than you think. So on paper, the strategy might look good. Then you include costs, edge gone. And I've ha seen this happen before time and time again. So include the costs, add the spread, add slippage to it as well and see if it's still profitable because like I said, you want to build a backtest, but you also want to make the strategy applicable in live markets and the live markets are going to be costs and the backtest should be as close as possible to, to the live market. So keep that in mind, big mistake a lot of people make. If you develop strategy for a general market such as FX, the strategy should work across the majority of those markets. That's how I view it. So if you, for example, are like, I want to capitalize on a swing trading swing trading pattern or whatever it is in Forex and you test 10 Forex pairs, works in three, on seven it loses. It's probably not that good. If you test 20 markets and it works on 10 to 15 markets and the other ones are around break, even slightly down, some maybe a bit more down, that's fine, you know, but it shouldn't be the case that Maybe you develop a strategy for uh, for indices and it works in the S&P, doesn't work in the DAX, doesn't work in the NASDAQ, doesn't work in, you know, the, the US 30 or the, the Russell, then it's probably not that good. So keep that into consideration. Another thing is a rule of thumb to prevent optimization or at least over-optimization. And that's to only use five filters. Now, you stop is a filter. Your entry is a filter. Your target or exit mechanism is a filter. Then basically you have two filters left for optimization. Those two should be two filters that make sense for the strategy or the markets that you're trading. And depending on what type of filter these are, you should use them in out of sample testing. And I think if you use this rule, only five filters, it's going to help you a lot with back testing and not go too far into the data and over-optimize. So I think that's a good rule of thumb to have and to use it in your own strategy development. Another thing, when you're developing your edge, always ask yourself this question. Am I building a better backtest or am I making a better strategy that can actually work in the live marks and in the future? And from my experience, what most people that actually backtest spend their time on is building a better backtest. It's not making a better strategy that can work in the live markets. So keep the, always keep this in mind. Are you looking for the holy grail during backtesting? Are you too positive? Do you want a perfect equity curve? Or do you want a decent strategy, not much optimization? And it's better to have five decent strategies that have actual drawdowns than to put all your time into perfecting the equity curve because first of all that will not work in live markets second of all you'll waste a lot of time it's better to build one decent strategy that you're fine with okay let's build a new one a completely different one let's build another one that's completely different let's build a portfolio of completely different mechanical strategies that's often the best thing to do time wise but also profitability wise because you're not overfitting one single strategy Systematic discretion after experience. And most people that start out, start out as discretionary traders. And I think that's a big struggle for most people because they just need to first understand edges. How do edges play out? All these things. And if you use a discretionary method, this can be um, very hard to do. However, I do think there's a place for systematic discretion and that comes with experience. 
So to give you an example from my own trading, I've been almost trading for seven years. I've been trading my strategy for well over two years now and I've also put in a lot of time to develop it before I even started trading it live. I know the strategy inside out. Over the years, I've seen so many things happen, so many trades I've taken. And because of that, you develop some type of experience, some type of feel with your markets and with your strategy. So I noticed that if certain things happen or the, the, the setup happens at a certain location, I just noticed from journaling. So you do want to journal that you want to have statistics to back your decisions up. But then using systematic discretion, I sometimes bend my rules to add a little bit more risk or to change my entry a little bit based on my experience from what I've seen happening over and over again from what I've been journaling. And a lot of people ask me, why don't you just program your strategy? Because I can't program my experience. And I do believe in the long term, the best combination is going to be a mechanical foundation of the strategy and then you adding systematic discretion a little bit over time to improve its performance. Uh, I think that's the golden combination, but you should start with that mechanical foundation, start testing it the right way, getting experience there. And then once you've been trading it for a long time, adding systematic discretion can increase or at least improve your results. So hopefully that does make sense. All right, so if you've any questions about this topic, if you've been testing something and you're stuck, if you, you know, if you have any questions about anything I spoke about, comment down below. You can send me a DM on Instagram. You can send me an email. The link is below this video as well to go to my website and send me an email. Basically reach out because if you're struggling on your own and it's just not working, you're going to waste a lot of time and energy and you can just ask me a question and get the answer. So that's really easy to do. If you want to learn my exact mechanical trading strategy and build mechanical trading edges in a team of experienced traders, click the link below. There you can find everything about my uh, one-on-one -on -one program. Every month, I basically take on three people. It used to be five, now it's three. Only three people to work at one-on-one. -on -one. I teach them my strategy. I teach them exactly how to build new edges. Then they become part of the team. And we build edges together. So it's way quicker. And we all have multiple strategies after the projects are finished. So if you're interested in that, link below. And then I really want to thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you have questions, comment down below. And then I'll see you next time.